Longevity. Since a vehicle purchase is usually the second or third most expensive purchase that people will make after home ownership and a college education. That seems weird pairing those. <laughs> it is, but <laughs> price tag's <laughs> so, nasty. That's what it is. what it is. It's important that we get our money's worth. Currently, the average age of a motor vehicle on the road in the United States is just over 11 years old. Imagine if you could get even more trouble-free miles out of your purchase. Well, the website iccars.com released the results of a recent study that looked at the top 10 longest kept vehicles by their original owners for at least 15 years. We take a look at the SUV category. Yeah, they had different categories and I wasn't going to go through all the lists because it was pretty extensive, but they were looking at, they talked to, um, they're an automotive research firm. They analyzed over 660,000 cars from 1981 to 2005 sold in the model year 2020 to determine which car owners were most likely to keep for at least 15 years. Now, I'm trying to figure out who would be selling in 1981 anything. Uh, I was around when those were built, and most of them, I'd be surprised if they lasted 10 years on their own. And and do you think, because while I think this is really interesting information, does this bode well if someone, you know, is looking at a Toyota today or, you know, because obviously no one's buying these cars anymore because they're old, you know, not really anyway. Well, I mean, you, most of us can go around and it's not hard to find a 15 or 20 year old vehicle on the road, whether it be car, yeah. truck, yep. SUV, simple. And to be blunt, vehicles, regardless of who makes them. The quality is, has done nothing but get better over the years. A lot of great things are happening. I mean, nobody replaces a, an exhaust system anymore. Why? Because, for example, it went stainless steel 25, 24 years ago. You only replace mufflers. Spark plugs? Shoot. When I was growing up, you had to replace mu- uh, spark plugs at 15,000. You gapped them at 15,000. You changed them at a most 30,000 miles. Today, 100,000, and they don't look like they were even worn. So, you know, it's easier, and this is interesting because this is customer choice, and we're only going to talk about the SUV category. Maybe in the weeks to come, I might t- you know touch a few more, but I want to do this one. It looked at the top 10, and I'm just I'm going to work from – 10 to 1. Uh, number 10 was the Subaru Outback. Uh, 6.8% of their owners keep it 15 years or more. Number 9, surprising, the Hyundai Tucson. I mean, it's not an expensive vehicle, but it's rock solid, and 7.6% of owners keep it 15 years or longer. In 8th place, the Acura MDX, which is kind of a luxury vehicle, 7.9. Um, in 7th place, the Toyota RAV4, which is a little bit more expensive uh, on the compact side, but still bulletproof. Number six, and they don't sell a lot of these, the Toyota Sequoia. That is a big, expensive um, SUV, uh, 9.1%. In fifth place, the Toyota 4Runner, which is more of a rugged kind of vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, 94 In fourth place, another surprise, Subaru Forester. Uh, I am reminded of the art of the uh, long time ago um, catchphrase or their tagline used to be inexpensive and built to stay that way. Apparently that must, I don't know about the inexpensive part, but the built to stay that way yeah. is apparently still very true. Third place. Um, again, not a volume vehicle, but one that 10.4% of their owners will still be driving more than 15 years from now. The Honda pilot. Number two, and this is no surprise because they, I believe that this is Honda's best seller, and it's Honda, the Honda CRV. It has excellent resale. They sell a lot of them, and not surprise people that 10.7 percent um, of the owners keep it 15 years or more. In number one place, I'm not surprised. My brother owned one, uh, and they're wonderful if you can afford to get in one. Is the Toyota Highlander. of all owners keep these things more than 15 years. And by average age compared to the SUV average age, that's more than two times the average. So, you know, there's something to be said to Toyota, and that's not news. 
I mean, I've always told people that if you're going to be putting on mileage and you're going to, and you need to keep this thing a while, you should probably own a Toyota. I was going to say, Toyota dominates these lists. Yeah. Dominates the Not cars. Not a surprise. Dominates and, the trucks. And it's been that way for years. I have a Toyota. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> and your Toyota, wait a minute. It's not 15 years. I think it's 2011, so we're getting there. Well, you're math, over 10. Yeah, 15. You're, no. you're 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 now in your 11th year of ownership of that car, or it's 11 years old. Yep. Yeah. Now my my but, mom got it pretty new. Yeah, but let me point this out. These numbers are people who bought these smack new. Yep. And kept them that long. Yep. Mine'll be there. You know, and now if you want to add in all the people who bought. 10 and 15 year old vehicles as maybe the third or fourth owner and are still driving them. Um, you know, and, and understand people, these are the top 10. It doesn't mean that they're not American makes. It might be in the 11 to 20 slot, which is certainly not in the scoff at when you're looking at the millions of vehicles and different models that were made, even by nameplates that are no longer sold anymore, that people are still driving. I mean, there's still people out there still driving Chevy Monte Carlos. Monte Carlo has been out of production for 16 years. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Still people driving Pontiacs. I followed somebody in a Pontiac. Um, oh, the, 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 ooh, the uh, G8, which was imported from Australia. GM doesn't even make cars in Australia anymore, let alone Pontiac doesn't exist anymore. And that car was pristine, my brother. <laughs> when I pulled up behind it. Yeah. And I know it was at least 10 years. Well, actually now. Would have been 12 years old. And it looked pristine, not raggedy at all. So there are a lot of other nameplates out there that people are keeping for a long time. And maybe you wonder how well these people are taking care, you know, taking care of the vehicles. Let, let's be honest for a minute. Let, let's just be honest. If you are driving a 13 year old vehicle, mm -hmm. it's because that's what you got the money to drive. Yeah. You're doing the best you can taking care of it, yeah. but it ain't going to necessarily be the most pristine car yeah, on the road. True, true. I mean, it, with just hard facts, hard facts. You bought what your money would let you. Yeah. You're trying to get the most out of it, you know, and, you know, some people buy vehicles up over 150,000 miles. I would never do that, but some people do. And some people would grab, yeah, I bought this when it had 120,000 on it. And I put another 120,000 on it and it didn't cost me anything to run. It happens. Yeah. And some of those cars... And trucks and minivans are American made. My wife got almost 200,000 miles out of hers. We squeezed the life out of that Dodge Grand Caravan. And I'm sure it went to the junkyard afterwards. <laughs> it was hurt. That poor girl was hurt when we got out of it. But she got every inch of value out of it. I'm just a little over 150 right now, I believe, on mine. Shoot. I'm I had it, I had. I was the second owner of an 89 Plymouth Acclaim that I bought in 93. By the time I gave that up, it had 180 some odd thousand miles on it. So, you know, this is not new. Not new at all. This is Roadworthy Drive.